no show in this decade has left me more rattled, humiliated, and broken than Squid Game. It approached the classic death game story with more nuance to make it feel more visceral. Squid Game went above and beyond by exploring the theme of self-preservation and plunged into the dangers of the modern hyper-capitalist structure that we find ourselves suffocated by today. Similar to Parasite, Squid Game dismantles capitalism along with the mind of the viewer. Culturally speaking, capitalism is supposed to be comfortable, supportive, and stable. But in reality, this is never the case. One thing the show does is perpetuate an existential vulnerability we all feel when we are at our most poor. This show made me highly uncomfortable and it gave me an overarching sense of dread by targeting my own vulnerabilities. Squid Game isn't just some fad, but an instant classic that will stand the test of time because it does things that are so harrowing that it makes you more than simply scared. If you haven't seen it already, Squid Game is about hundreds of people in South Korea who are all in debt that agree to play children's games and whoever loses gets killed. The last person standing wins a tremendous amount of money. Squid Game orients itself in the bitter certainty created by death. The thing about death that Squid Game shows is that nothing can truly prepare you for it and no episode had more important character deaths other than episode 6, Ganbu. Emotionally speaking, aside from some of its more unorthodox moments, <laughs> this episode is structured in an extremely impactful way that feels more relatable and human. The deaths in this episode have a bluntness that hits the viewers to their cores. Ali's death was particularly startling because he was a lesson that kindness and a good heart only take you so far before someone stabs you in the back. He represented everything good and naive in humanity, but was rightfully twisted and destroyed by the superior Daddy. character in every way, Song Wu. Ali was so nice, innocent, and amazingly brainless. One of the biggest reasons why Squid Game rattled my psyche was because the main character, Ji Hun, was so relatable. The most terrifying psychological horrors have protagonists that you can resonate with. And Ji Hun is very relatable. Many people would have gone for the sand option in the end fight as well because the majority of society are pussies. Also, Ji Hun is a neat. The definition of neat is not seeking education, employment, or training. Ji Hun, being a neat, touches on the uncomfortable truth that many Zoomers are facing today. And that, my friends, is your mom getting the wrong tendies for dinner tonight. And maybe the only thing more terrifying than your chicken tendies getting cold is racism which Squid Game has plenty of. Here is a trigger warning because we are about to get into some seriously disturbing stuff about this show. Squid Game is incredibly racist. There are no black people or gay people to be seen. It made many sick to their stomach, but at the very least the white people are portrayed as evil as they should be. The white people in the show are the VIPs, and they are evil to their core. The next few minutes were some of the most incredibly raw, 
provocative and cosmically terrifying things I have ever experienced on television. It's unpleasant, but not tasteless. The VIP's performances were truly some of the scariest performances of a lifetime. And I remember genuinely wanting to turn off my television because my sides hurt so much it left me sweating, shaking, and confused. Some of the lines they said were so well delivered, it stayed with me for weeks, just ringing endlessly in my head. Oh, it's uh, such a beautiful number, 69. <laughs> oh, you dirty dog. There is some chilling symbolism in Squid Game. One of the first ones that comes to mind has to be Ji Hun's player number 456. This number is a very important one because he won 45.6 million won at the horse races near the beginning. He became the 456th player in the games and finally he won 45.6 billion won. The article 456 angel number meaning and symbolism puts it well. Receiving an angel number means that you are far luckier than the average person. Angel numbers are shown to you by angels and ascended masters. They want to improve your life and ensure that you are doing the right things that make you closer to your life goals and purpose. Ji Hung finds his purpose with the help of his guardian angel in the form of the old man and that is to bet on other people's lives just like him. Another piece of haunting symbolism comes in the form of color. We see red and blue come up a lot in Squid Game. Most importantly, at the beginning when the contestants have to either pick their blue or the red square in a game similar to Pog called Jiakji. Ji Hung picked blue at the beginning because he is what is known as blue pilled. Basically, Ji Hun cared too much for his ungrateful daughter near the beginning and was in blissful ignorance of how his life could be better if he just ignored her. But by the end, the businessman red pilled him on not caring about his family anymore due to pure rage. So dyeing his hair red and transitioning into a woman represented him finally taking the ultimate red pill. The shapes in Squid Game have also been a huge mystery to the community, but it's time to unveil the true meaning behind them. It is simple, really. Look at the symbols next to the PlayStation controller. See the similarity. Well, these shapes connect Squid Game to video gaming. It all makes sense when the fifth game was actually supposed to be Super Smash Bros. Melee for the Nintendo GameCube. But they had to reshoot the scene due to copyright issues with Nintendo. The eerie symbolism of the contestants walking through the bright staircases represents how we are all just cogs in the machine known as the capitalist society we live in today. Squid Game proves that it is an objective truth that all rich people are inherently evil and should be burned and tortured for the sole fact that they are rich. Maybe instead of watching Squid Game, Jeff Bezos should light himself on fire with the incendiary tears of the proletariat. To illustrate why the message of Squid Game is so chillingly brilliant, let's take a look at a modern example of capitalism gone too far in the form of Hopper from A Bug's Life. You let one ant stand up to us, then they all might stand up. Those puny little ants outnumber us a hundred to one. And if they ever figure that out, there goes our way of life. It's not about food. It's about keeping those ants in line. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hopper is exactly what is wrong with capitalism. He pushes down the helpless ants, similar to how the rich keep the wagey in the cagey. We need communism to keep inhumane capitalists down. Hashtag eat the rich. If we just abolish capitalism, all of Ji Hun's issues would be solved. He would have universal health care for his mum. His daughter wouldn't need to move away because her new daddy wouldn't need to go to work in the United States. He would be able to fuel his gambling addiction, feed this cat a lot more, and could buy all the red hair dye he could ever need and continue to not give his daughter a penny of any of his money. Squid Game represents how the rich control us and watch us play the rat race. And that is why today's sponsor is so important. Penn Island VPN allows you to save the money that would otherwise go into the slimy rich's pockets. Penn Island has servers in only one country, diminishing your Netflix catalog to include only seven titles. Penn Island VPN's access to far fewer Netflix shows might seem like a bad thing, but it actually helps you decide easier. Also, it will make hackers not want to touch any of your information in fear of looking sus. All you have to do is switch your location to Penn Island, and you will have access to anything located on Penn Island. Out of all the VPNs I've used, Penn Island is by far my favorite. Penn Island kindly provided me with the promo code I love Penn Island that gives you one hour free and 0.5% off. So if you're interested in only watching a show or maybe a film exclusive to Penn Island, use my promo code and click on my link in the description to download Penn Island today. Despite what the critics may say, the only way to get the full terrifying immersive experience of this allegory for the dangers of modern hyper-capitalism is to watch the dub. Watching the dub is essential to understanding why Netflix decided it was going to be at its most meta for this new hit show. Netflix reinforced the critique of capitalism when their staff made the dub by just asking the interns at Netflix to sit down and record it in one sitting. Need you, old man, can't you see that? Get up! God, this bitch so pathetic, get your hands off me. Instead of putting in the money to make a good dub, they instead cut costs and increased profits by 69% to take on the role of the greedy profit-seeking corporation to wake up its audience. I'm usually let down by Netflix, but this is on a whole other level. Bravo. Damn, number 69 ain't here. Stop jerking off. Shit, he's already come. <laughs> Truly revolutionizing cultural commentary on their part. One of the most terrifying facts about Tentacle Tournament is its popularity. The show has reached millions, making it one of the most popular Netflix shows to date. Why should we be afraid of this popularity? Well, when something is popular, it usually doesn't make it automatically terrifying. However, once we examine how this show's popularity will be used to control us, the grim reality starts to set in. Season 2 of Squid Game will probably have a record number of people tuning in at the exact same time to watch in unison. And this will be when they turn on the microchips from the COVID vaccine. It started with K-pop, BTS, Parasite, and finally we have arrived at Squid Game. South Korea has been infiltrating the zeitgeist of American culture by critiquing the very fabric of the country's creation. Originally, Fauci's documentary was going to be the vessel of activation, but they didn't have the numbers needed. 
So South Korean entertainment officials are teaming up with a secret few powerful elite Americans like Bill Gates and Dr. Fauci to activate everyone's microchips in order to start their own squid game during the premiere of season two. I am not ready for that. The cop storyline was absolutely brilliant because we got to see the game from the inside. We got to see how poorly the guards are treated and it is truly horrifying. But as the show progresses, we see the guards kind of deserve their treatment. This view from the inside shows how horrible the guards are by how they exploit the doctor for profit and have intercourse with cadavers. The storyline also quickly showed how sinister the fandom was. The twisted fan base started churning out Rule 34s on the guards at record pace. That is so unspeakable that I won't even show it on this channel. The cop storyline is going to set up for next season where we probably won't get to see any of the games, which is why people watch it in the first place. Making the show's next season worse on purpose is truly the ultimate subversion of expectations. All of this being said, the thing that shook me to my core was jealousy for the cop's battery life on his own. Something that's super disturbing was the treatment of the best character Song Woo. Song Woo should have won because it would have made more normies seethe, cementing this show as one of the best kinos in history. He was the only character that actually looked at the situation objectively and did what he had to do to win. Ji Hung just has luck and plot armored his way through. Song Wu, on the other hand, had terrible luck. Imagine having sex with some United States chicks, they steal your money and frame you. Then you get accepted into the death game to gain back your rightful fortune, only to be held back by your best friend who won't get off his moral high ground. The most disturbing thing about Squid Game by far is the unfair treatment of my waifu Sai Byuk. It was so wrong of the creators of the show to kill the best character. Plus, the way she died is literally impossible. Because if you look at the angle of the glass shard and how it went into her side, and how the glass bridge blew up, apply Newton's second law of motion, then it is clear that the change of momentum on the glass shard is not nearly proportional to the impressed force of the bridge blowing up. And even if it was, it wasn't in a straight line from where the force acted. On top of this, if you apply Avogadro's law, the force of Sai Byuk's cuteness was much stronger than that of the plot making any sense. So in accordance to Avogadro's law, Sai Byuk's death is a theoretical impossibility because it is not a proportional outcome. I am not alone in my outrage for this. Me and many others were as broken as the glass shards stuck in the middle of my true waifu. To bring this to a close, Kraken competition is not like other shows or movies. Usually sequels or exact reboots are bad, but this reboot to the popular anime Kaiji was actually quite well made. Squid Game wasn't just good, it completely broke me for many different reasons, like lazy writing, immaculate character deaths, relatability, racism, spot-on critique of capitalism, amazing dub, impending psyop, fan-based degeneracy, horrible treatment of Sang Woo, and yellow fever to name a few. Ending of cephalopod competition is where I truly fell apart. It starts very tragic with Sang Woo, Sai Byuk, and Ji Hun's mother dying which spiraled Ji Hun into a deep depression. And who else is it to break him out of this rut? None other than the man 
who had been pulling the strings behind Squid Game the entire time. Oh Il Nam. What makes this twist so groundbreaking is that Oh Il Nam has all the money and power in the world, with the ability to experience anything he wants to. And what does he want to re-experience? Friendship. And in the final moments of his life, even though he can experience anything before he goes, what does he want to experience? Well, the thing that made him actually feel something for the first time in a while. Betting on someone's life one more time in the presence of his ganbu, Ji Hun. He was simply rich and bored and taught us to never blindly trust boomers because they're hella sus, on God, no cap. Oh Il Nam died before being proven wrong. He died fully convinced he was right and was spared a second of self-doubt about what he did. This is what did it. This is what broke me. It's when I realized he went into death based as ever before. The question this scene asks, and Squid Game as a whole, is was he wrong? Are humans just selfish, opportunistic assholes that only care about themselves and poor people should just be used as the rich see fit? Well, the short answer to that question is yes. And I think the creator would agree. Huang Don Hyuk wanted an ending that incited hope. And I can tell you nothing was more hopeful than the last minute where even though Ji Hung didn't see his daughter for a whole year after winning, he decides to hell with that, it's time for another cash cow deadly adventure in season 2 without leaving his daughter a single penny of his 46 billion won, he won. Thanks to his ganbu, he finally becomes a sigma. <laughs>